students let us discuss about the pharyngeal plexus the topic of pharyngeal plexus will be discussed under the following headings definition of pharyngeal plexus its location formation structures innervated by the pharyngeal plexus and its clinical importance let us start our discussion with a case scenario following use of oropharyngeal anesthetic pack during third molar surgery a patient complained right sided sensory loss over the pharynx soft palate and posterior one third of the tongue so right sided sensory loss over the pharynx soft palate and posterior one third of tongue then weakness of right side of pharynx and soft palate without vocal cord injury this is the case and you have to answer for the question you have to give anatomical explanation for the right sided sensory loss and weakness of the pharynx and soft palate and right sided sensory loss of posterior one third of tongue then what is the answer and explanation for this the answer is it's a case of unilateral it is right sided pharyngeal plexus injury now we have to give explanation for this case and to get the explanation let us discuss the pharyngeal plexus under the various subheadings now let us define the pharyngeal plexus so this is a nerve plexus that contains sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion in this picture you can see the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion and see the nerve fibers from it follow them okay then and it also contains the somatic axons both motor and sensory from the pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve the accessory nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve so you can see the branches coming from the 10th that is the vagus nerve you can follow them and then the branches from the glossopharyngeal nerve also can be followed and also accessory nerve fibers also will join it they form a plexus in relation with the middle constrictor of the pharynx so the location of the pharyngeal plexus is in the posterolateral wall of pharynx and the middle constrictor of the pharynx and the purpose of this plexus is to innervate the muscles and mucosa of pharynx and soft palate so in this picture you are also seeing the common carotid artery the external carotid artery and its branches that is the superior thyroid artery the lingual artery the facial artery like that you will be seeing the branches of it and the ascending pharyngeal also then you can see the internal carotid artery so it's a nerve plexus containing the sympathetic fibers then the fibers from the pharyngeal branch of vagus then the accessory nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve and it innervates the muscles and mucosa of pharynx and soft palate coming to the formation of pharyngeal plexus the pharyngeal plexus it's having a sensory component 
which is contributed by the pharyngeal branches of glossopharyngeal nerve which you can see in the picture the pharyngeal branches of glossopharyngeal nerve the motor component is contributed by the pharyngeal branches of the vagus nerve and also the cranial part of accessory nerve is also joining it then the sympathetic fibers which are vaso motor they are derived from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion you can see the pharyngeal branch coming from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion and you can see the plexus being formed on the middle constrictor muscle this is the middle constrictor muscle in relation with that we are seeing the pharyngeal branches of glossopharyngeal the vagus the cranial accessory which joins the vagus and the pharyngeal branch from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion so in relation with the middle constrictor of pharynx now let us see what are the structures that are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus so it is the main motor and sensory supply for the pharynx and soft palate so it is motor to all muscles of pharynx that is the superior middle and inferior constrictors the palato pharyngeus and the solpingo pharyngeus so the exception is the stylo pharyngeus which is supplied by the glasso pharyngeal nerve then the motor for the soft palate so the muscles of soft palate is the palato glossus the musculus uvulae the levator palatini these are supplied through the pharyngeal plexus the exception is the tensor palatine muscle of the soft palate which receives its nerve supply from the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve which is a nerve of first arch so the tensor palatine is derived from the first pharyngeal arch then coming to the sensory innervation so it gives sensory innervation to oropharynx and laryngopharynx through the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves the nasopharynx above the pharyngotympanic tube and torus tuberius it is innervated by maxillary division of trigeminal nerve so now you know it's giving motor branches to the muscles of pharynx and soft palate with exceptions of stylopharyngeus and tensor palatine muscles and sensory innervation to oropharynx and laryngopharynx now let us look into the clinical importance of the pharyngeal plexus so the anatomy of pharyngeal plexus is important to avoid the complications of post operative dysphagia when a surgical procedure known as anterior cervical discectomy and fusion so that is removal of the cervical disc that is the anterior cervical discectomy from the anterior aspect and the fusion of the adjacent vertebra in cases of decompression of the cervical cord due to protrusion of the intervertebral disc and posteriorly projecting osteophytes in such cases they have to do this procedure and the approach is from the anterior aspect starting from the midline and the neck and then going deeper posteriorly so pushing the trachea and esophagus with pharynx to a side and then approaching the 
cervical intervertebral discs and the procedure is also performed during damaged discs due to trauma common being the car accidents in degenerative disc diseases and in scoliosis so in such cases as it is an anterior approach there is the possibility of damage to the pharyngeal plexus during the surgical procedure and in the case of dental surgery is also the pharyngeal plexus can be damaged as is the case in the case scenario with which we have started the discussion of pharyngeal plexus now let us give explanation for the case scenario of a case of tooth extraction of third molar tooth on the right side for which oropharyngeal anesthetic pack is placed and the patient complained of right sided sensory loss over pharynx soft palate and posterior one third of tongue and weakness of pharynx and soft palate so the explanation for right sided sensory loss and motor weakness or due to the injury to pharyngeal plexus because of the passage of the instrument during the procedure that is either the ringoscope or medial forceps or keeping a partially soaked cotton fibers so from the teeth to oropharynx on the right side so that is the cause for injury to the pharyngeal plexus and the musculature of pharynx both oropharynx and laryngopharynx except the stylo pharyngeus and soft palate except and soft palate any are separated by pharyngeal plexus the vocal cords are spared as the muscles acting on vocal cords are innervated by different nerves from the vagus that is the external and recurrent laryngeal nerves the sensory innervation of pharynx and soft palate are by the 10th cranial nerve that is the vagus branch and of posterior one third of tongue is by the glossopharyngeal nerve this way the sensory innervation of pharynx and soft palate and posterior one third of tongue are affected in the present case hope you have understood about the importance of pharyngeal plexus and its location and formation and its distribution